I'm a teacher of special education, trained especially in the teaching of learners with severe and multiple disabilities, including deaf blindness. And the approach that I was trained in um, used aspects of the Van Dyke approach. Now, Van Dyke was a uh, teacher who worked with the deaf blind in the 1960s, because in Holland, in the 60s, there was a tremendous outbreak of measles. And it, one of the results of measles is uh, deaf blindness. And so he would take these learners and he had an approach with them to try and help them deal with the dual sensory loss that they had. And he had a four-pronged approach that he used, which there were at least 15 instructional strategies under it, but he had these four basic outcomes that he wanted. He wanted the learners to be able to bond with people. He wanted the learners to develop uh, attachment and security. That's what bonding is. Uh, he wanted them to be able to develop a unique expressive and lang uh, receptive language um, competency. He wanted them to be, be able to integrate the near and the distance senses. That is, integrate the uh, senses of touch with the sense of sight, the, the sense of smell with the sense of hearing. Integrate the senses, sensory integration. He wanted the um, learners to be able to understand what is the nature of the world? How, well, how is it constituted? How do they learn about it? And he wanted the learners to be able to um, just have an understanding of of what it was to be able to put all this together and function a, as a, and get a real picture of what the world is about. So what we have here is a, a learning area that we have set up along those lines and also using what are um, what's called uh, differentiated instruction. And we've integrated into that as well um, aspects of the Gardner, um, Howard Gardner approach as far as Gardner's understanding of how the brain learns. Gardner studied uh, many people who had uh, a traumatic uh, brain injury, insults to the brain of various kinds, and he realized that the brain had a plasticity and it could learn and it could uh, acquire information, um, it could make new pathways, and in studying people's brains who had been injured, he realized that people had um, areas of what he called multiple intelligences. And he says everybody has them, and there are at least seven of them. And then he would say that, for instance, language, uh, logical, mathematical, uh, visual, spatial, um, a, a musical, um, interpersonal, interpersonal, uh, 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 intrapersonal is uh, um, being able to uh, talk to another person. Interpersonal is um, uh, being able to understand insights about yourself. These kinds of things. Now, not everything applies to the learners that we have, but we take aspects of these things and then we apply it. And if you look at the, the environment we've created here, for, uh, you will notice that we have many mobiles, we have lights, and the idea is to address the aspect of visual uh, spatial learning and, and um, to be able to have these learners, as soon as they come into the environment, they'll be able to look and see lights, they can see color, that, and they can see shape, they can see uh, things from a distance. And so these things deal with uh, visual perception. And then uh, ocular motor skills are dealt with as they look from left to right or up and down or shift their, their eyes from an object to a person or from an object to an object. So those aspects of, of, of vision are dealt with. And then we have um, other aspects of things that are dealt with. We have a little library here. We have a, a, uh, a library that consists of, of uh, books that deal with various, how is the world constituted? What, is it, what does it look like? We have, we have visual tactile books. And here, because it's an, a learning environment that involves um, um, academic instruction is part of the state of New York. We have what we see here, you can see we call this English language arts or literacy. And in this environment, 
sensory motor learners, and that age, sensory motor, is the first 18 months of cognitive, emotional, physical, psychological um, language development. It is the first 18 months. So we have sensory motor learning of sight, sound, shapes, and colors in a literary context. What does that mean in a literary context? You see this shape here. This, this, this is put into a literary context. You can say, well, it's not just a furry ball, but when, when the learner is able to open it up and touch the fur, it's on an animal. This is what Van Dyck would have meant by trying to get the learners to understand the nature of the world. Well, and that's the kind of thing you do, putting, putting um, sights, sounds, and colors into a literary context. And we do that through uh, tactile, visual tactile integration, visual tactile learning. You see a book here, and you can see the different textural shapes here. This is a simple uh, take in and take out, and it gives the learner an idea of a context. So for that kind of learning, exploring literary forms, poetry, stories, using print sources, and you can see the libraries we have here. Uh, uh, we have our libraries, Nature's Children, the New Book of Knowledge, encyclopedias, ma magazines, and maps, utilizing those things. So uh, then we have what we have the computer center. Computer center, and you, this is where you will see the use of what we call assistive and adaptive technology. This is a Big Mac switch. This switch enables the learner to be able to access this computer. It's, it's there way of being able to say, I can, as an agent of causality, help things to happen in my world, not just through my, how I look at somebody or how I vocalize to somebody if I'm nonverbal, but the fact is I can press this switch and I can, I can interact with this computer. This computer can become a tool for me through the use of this Big Mac switch. This is assistive and adaptive. Um, Facilitation. This, this is not a talking switch. This is a switch. This is a working switch to help a learner or, um, or an adult interact with a, um, a device in their environment. But the kind of things we do here would be time on task, sequencing, object recognition, word and or number recognition, following one step or two step commands, choice making, making requests, relational and cooperative play, motor planning. These are the kind of things that happen in the computer center. Then we move to the area of mathematics. Mathematics at the sensory motor level and this for the age of these learners, which here is 13 to 19 years old, we are dealing with relating math to the everyday world through whole numbers. And we are talking about the actual counting numbers that they, we use, the numbers 1 through 10, um, using objects that can be used to represent a whole number. This can be say, okay, we're going to use this to represent number one. This will be number two. This will be number three, and so on. This is going to be number four. So we can use objects to represent whole numbers. L learning about geometric shapes. And here again, notice the, the um, multi-sensory application here. This is visual, it's tactile, and it's auditory. Mm -hmm. It has a shape, it makes a sound, and um, it, when the learner would touch it, it has unique property in its three-dimensional uh, construct. So then we have uh, classifying objects of a, as a group. Identifying shapes that contain angles, and we just saw some of those here. Um, 